Hello again. This is John Doremus with the Passing Parade, the story of a crusading economist. His name was Henry George. For a good part of his life, he experienced abject poverty. Concern for his fellow man prompted him to do something about it. Henry George was born in Philadelphia on September 2nd, 1839. One of ten children, he left school at the age of 14 and took a job as an errand boy. At 16, he went to sea and visited Australia and India before returning to New York in 1856. A year later, he went to Canada to seek his fortune in the gold field. Luck failed to smile on him, and he found his way to San Francisco, where he obtained work as a printer. Not for long, however. One job followed another. Then came unemployment and his first real taste of poverty. In 1861, he acquired a wife, an Australian-born girl named Annie Fox. They had two children. To support them, Henry George was obliged to beg in the streets. The assassination of President Lincoln on April 15, 1865, marked a turning point in his life. Fired by the senseless murder, he submitted an impassioned article on the subject to a California newspaper. The paper offered him a job, and in due course, he was signed on as a reporter for the San Francisco Times. Later, he joined the staff of the San Francisco Herald, a new Democratic Party paper, and was sent to New York to open an independent telegraphic news service. The venture failed. And before too long, he was out of work and on the breadline again. For some time, he had been writing a book outlining his theories on the causes of economic depressions and the spread of poverty in wealthy societies. Entitled Progress in Poverty, it was completed in 1879. The sales of the book were both immediate and enormous. Published at a time of economic crisis and industrial strife, it won for him international fame. In 1886, he represented New York's labor unions in the mayoral election. Viciously attacked by his opponents who branded him, among other things, an anarchist and a communist, he was defeated. In February of 1890, he departed from San Francisco for Australia, arriving in Sydney on March 6th of that year. Over the next three months, he moved around the country, lecturing to enthusiastic audiences. His honesty and logic won him supporters wherever he went. Among the ideas he put forward was that land belonged by right to the people and should be made available for all who wanted it, and not just the privileged few. He also expounded the theory that existing forms of taxation should be replaced with a single tax based on land valuation. On his return to America, he suffered a brain hemorrhage. His recovery was slow, but he continued to advocate his beliefs with his writings. In 1897, though in bad health, he was persuaded to contest the New York mayoral elections for a second time. His doctor told him flatly that the strain would be too much for him, that he would virtually be signing his own death warrant if he went ahead. This, in fact, proved to be the case. On October 28th, five days before the election, he was taken seriously ill and died during the night.